Okay, so welcome to the Thrive Through podcast after a long time of planning. Um, we were supposed to do this first with the whole project, so finally happy to get it up and running, Catherine. Absolutely, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> About a good year in yeah. the making. Um, it's funny because we um, did start it as a kind of initiative to um, talk about mental health and, 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 and provide that kind of platform and just use our kind of our own skills. Both of us uh, work in the media, we're both journalists um, and we've obviously since had contributors and um, you know writers for us that, that, that would work in the media as well. Um, so we've been very lucky with the amount of input we've had till now um, and it's somewhat worked out strange that we've kind of being blog led even though it's supposed to be the other way around isn't it yeah definitely we've got a lot more content on our site than we could ever have hoped for a lot of you guys are engaging with us every day which is absolutely fantastic to to see yeah and i think as well we've got this um see i think is we're primarily from writing backgrounds as well so we've almost kind of played to our strengths by accident on this one but um but no we're glad to kind of finally be here finally getting the podcast up and running and um, we've got that many guests that we can't wait to to get interviewed and hear their insights and really just provide this engaging content that we're really been trying to do for such a long time now. Um, so today we thought, we thought we would just kind of start the podcast with ourselves since we uh, founded Thrive Through. Absolutely, yep. <laughs> and, um, and we'll see, um, just just tell a wee bit about our platform, isn't it? And just, um, I suppose, one of the, I don't know about you, but one of the things some folk ask me when they first see our website is is, the, is my three eyes, which is uh, my impact, influence and insight. And I think together we've discussed this, like why we think that's very important, don't yeah. we? Yeah, and it's about um, basically raising awareness about mental health and ultimately we want to stop the stigma that still surrounds mental health today. I mean, it is a lot better than it used to be, but there are still some aspects of mental health that are not taken seriously or they're t- treated flippantly. And we just want to have an open discussion and um, bring as much um, discussion to the to the table as possible. Yeah, I think that's the important thing is that getting people to discuss and have that interaction because yeah. I don't know about you, but um, my experience in the media and working with mental health and dealing with um, different stories, I feel, I feel like there's always the potential there to really kind of make a difference and give people a voice, which is really why we do it in the media. But um, there sometimes lacks this thing with a story. You can only go so far yeah. in telling it. Yeah, there are sort of certain rules and stuff that you have to, to follow, but... Um, and some people they have such a, a, a an interesting story to tell but we don't always get to tell the full story because you've got a limited word, word count you're on deadline you can't always uh, tell the story as fully and um, as positively as uh, you might you might like so some things get missed out so we want to tell people's stories um, where where we can yeah and I think it primarily led on mental health and self improvement is is just amplifying that voice even further. Um, so, I mean, I, I suppose it's it's one of those things when people are talking about their journey, um, that's always the first step for them is to be open about it. But what thing I always come down to is, well, what are we then doing about it? I think it's great that we're now talking more about mental health, but I suppose part of our initiative is to try and um, push that platform a bit further and um, give that voice um I don't know, more airtime, isn't it? Just, just kind of getting to that point where we can do more to help people. And also, we've both experienced mental health uh, problems ourselves, myself, since a, since a young girl, and it's taken till this year for me to actually be open and honest uh, and feel like I can talk about it. Um, it's still very nerve-wracking, obviously, but the more people who are brave enough to speak out about their mental health and um, the steps they take to ad- address address um, the problems they face to try and overcome their struggles and um, the more people talk about this the more it'll be accepted as an actual health condition and not um, something that people dismiss yeah absolutely and I think that's one of the things I want to touch on you to, with you today Catherine is that um, you speak a lot about the stigma and how it still exists today um, and I think I think I suppose just to delve a wee bit deep into that like what are these kind of old-fashioned concepts if you like you're right in calling them old-fashioned mental health um, is still seen as a weakness it's still seen as um, certain people can only suffer from mental health problems um, for example um, I almost feel still feel guilty about the problems I have because I'm not meaning to go on about too much about me but I don't particularly have a 
bad past, I don't have a bad upbringing, I've had a very happy childhood, but I can't help the way I feel, I can't control it, I've tried, um, and the amount of people that have told you to snap out of it, or don't feel like that, or try not to feel like that, or try and be more positive, um, these are very um, old fashioned ways that people think they're helping, but they're just not, and they ultimately make the person end up feeling 10 times worse uh, than, they, they, than they originally did. And if someone is coming to you for advice, you need to know how to actually give them proper advice and, and, and help rather than uh, offer an opinion, which you might, might think is helpful, but it's actually quite damaging and could really hurt the person even more. Yeah, and I think that's a huge part of the conversation is to having that open mind about yeah. it. Um, I think just when talking about our own experiences, it's um, there's certainly a lot of um, guilt that carries it because obviously we've, we're, we're both kind of fortunate enough to have you know decent enough kind of upbringings and stuff, and people always want to see something tangible to why you are the way that you are. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just what we've kind of learned to do over the years is just accept kind of who we are. Um, my only kind of experience with that, just kind of quickly, was just um, I think we'd done Ed, Ed Rebecca the rights for us. She'd done a great piece on pill shaming, and it was something that I experienced quite at quite a young age, and and I was um, so I, I always felt you know like guilty that I was on antidepressants mm. at one point. Um, I was felt guilty that I was on like, sleeping medication and things like that, and it was I don't think people kind of understood why I needed them, and 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 of course. As you know yourself, what's the hardest thing to do? Explain to someone yeah. what you know why you do. Especially and, when you can't understand yourself, how you're feeling, and you're trying to uh, get your head around what's going on, and you you go to a doctor as well, and they, they you try and tell them what's going on, and you think you've googled, you've researched, you know, like, I think I actually might have depression or severe anxiety. Um, for myself, it's both, which um, as many of you will know. Both are as bad as each other independently, but when they're mixed together, it's absolute torture. Um, but for me, the biggest challenge was actually getting my doctor to take me seriously in the first place. Um, even doctors seem to think that um, mental you don't want to have depression or anxiety written in your medical records, which I find absolutely shocking. I was like, well, if you're going to help someone... <laughs> Why? Why would you? Why would you refuse to help them? Yeah. And why would you not give them that 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 thing and it, like that thing or that antidepressant or that a uh, beta blocker that's going to help just make life a wee bit more bearable for yeah. them, help them get through the day without having to constantly go outside and take breaths of fresh air or count to ten or ten Mississippis or <laughs> or what or, yeah. or what not. I think that's the or thing. Or scream into a pill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think people kind of talk um, aside from like pills and things like that. Um, they'll go see other kind of treatments. It's very yeah. some kind of like mystical, kind of whimsical <laughs> way of treating you and mindfulness and stuff like that. And I suppose you know it's, it's hard to articulate to someone that maybe hasn't never experienced it before or, or, or hasn't tried certain methods before but um, going back to what we're doing I suppose is that we're trying to use our kind of position in the media to kind of um, you know make these things come to life I suppose rather than writing a story about somebody that's that the struggle that's really good and I, I know from my own experience writing stories someone struggle um, you know we had, you know we've done one on on um, you know, you know, a great lad, Nikki, who suffered from PTSD. Mm, yes. Very and, interesting um, story. And and what we kind of found there is that, like, going to the lens we did with him, um, with his story, it it actually did help other people understand PTSD, and we yeah. managed to do a kind of backup piece to kind of say, well, um, so I suppose it's just kind of bringing awareness as as much as anything, which I think the media does a good job of already but I suppose we're just trying to, to take it that wee bit yeah, further yeah and like well, and like this today it's, it's a conversation it's, and it's, con yeah. it's continual and I always say that um, I, I think I rarely finish an article was saying you know you know you know, you know, and that's how you to do it or you know that's yeah you know, that's the there's kind of di point. different people will have different coping mechanisms there's not a a one fit or one hat fits all that kind of thing um, you you need to um, find what helps you and what might help you might not help some someone else yes. I personally really like yoga um, I also like uh, cooking as well but somebody else might find cooking really stressful whereas if I'm <laughs> covered head to foot in flour I'm happy yeah, <laughs> yeah. no it, it, it's just amazing I think it's it's, it's, it's a very um it's a very individualistic uh, topic and I suppose that is one thing that we're always kind of trying to drive. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing about Thrive Through is that we, we were, we're trying to be as creative as possible. So if we can find ways to 
get the media out there and and to people can engage in a new way and be quite innovative in that way. Um, I, I was very clear at one point I wanted to kind of transform the media landscape. Nobody can do that single handedly, yeah. but you know it's it's we always kind of put our missions right at the top. Um, so when we write and we produce content, we're trying to we're, we're aiming for that. You know, people yeah. thinking of a kind of much bigger picture. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's basically what we've been doing for the last few months now. Um, Fly through itself will have a number of guests coming on, um, speaking openly. We'll be doing this a lot as well, yeah. um, and I suppose there's just that kind of we'll try and tie in as much of our kind of own work in with it as well, and uh, and you know get people on and really kind of push the conversation further. You know, absolutely. We've got as you say, we've got loads and loads of guests um, lined up who <laughs> either started charities or foundations to help, or have joined charities or. Um, just want to share their story to again to try and help other people who might be in the same uh, situation not quite sure what's going on and encourage you to take that step to get to get help um, because uh, my main motto is it's okay not to be okay yeah. <laughs> and um, that's the step of becoming okay and like learning how to deal with what's what's going yeah. on um, inside yeah well. I think that's really important just to know that it's 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 as much of um that kind of acceptance factor you're talking about and then a lot of our content as well um goes with not just dealing with mental health but then kind of you know essentially thriving as well if you yes. like you know so we were very quite clear on how we split our kind of content that we're kind of giving mental health a voice and then we're also um bringing self-improvement and self-awareness and that kind of enlightenment and you know well, I suppose self-improvement. There's no other kind of word for it, really. Um, so with that, what we've managed to do is we are collaborating with a team of life coaches who they're kind of, they don't even call it their work, it's their life's mission, really, just to kind of help people on that kind of scale. So it's not so much people coming to them with problems or times of crisis. It's, you know, if they've got a goal or a challenge or something yeah. they want to achieve, um, then, you know, they would approach them. And we've been very lucky to have their content so far because um, I'm very humble enough to admit when I speak with them that um, I, I learn something every time yeah. I speak with them, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm very much for, I mean, we, we try and push as much positivity as we can on social media and things like that. Um, but I suppose that's what it is, is that is there's those kind of moments of self-awareness um, and getting you to that kind of, you know, place to, because everyone's always striving to be better, you know, yeah. and, I, I, and, and that always happens, that needs to happen within, but a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know how to achieve that as well, which is what these life coaches are essentially trying to trying to promote as as well. Yeah. And I, like you said, so you're learning. I'm I'm learning from just even reading, <laughs> yeah. reading it as 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 well. Yeah, so it is really as much fun for us to kind of um get this content launched and you know as it says for everybody else, and we've been really quite overwhelmed with the support we've had for this. And the um, demand, especially for the podcast itself. Yeah, well, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I'm I kind of don't know what to tell people anymore, but because you know you, you you line this up, it was supposed to be podcast led, um. But you know, if you were doing this today, and the you know the the, the written content, the site, everything else afterwards, I don't really know how it would look and how yeah. we were. You know, we're kind of going in, um. You know, kind of blind, but you know, we're we're, we're very. We're, I mean, we're both very kind of confident in what we're kind of like trying to like achieve with it and and the support and people that we've had on board so far is ha, ha, has been very good and I suppose it just long may it continue just now isn't it? Absolutely yes so we have obviously touched on our day jobs and what they involve and how we want to um, bring the conversation of mental health into this platform. Matt you have uh, spoken quite a bit about how mental health is underrepresented um, in the in the media. Yeah no definitely I think it's it's, it's, a, it's a hard one to say because like it's a very niche topic of mine like in in the day job but it's like like I said before it, it's very hard to kind of reach that kind of level of impact and it's a you know it's it's, it's always the word I, I come back to and it's um it's, it sounds very kind of um again very whimsical but it's like when you kind of create content the for me that the, the, the you do it to kind of make a difference first to make an impact and you know yourself there's lots of stories you can do and you know people engage with and it can be make change especially at local level which we've both worked at absolutely yeah. um but yeah and no, i going back to kind of like mental health i think it's one of those things that 
I don't know. I, it's not even. It's not even like a, at an editorial level. It's just more. Um, for me, it, you get so far with it, um, and I, I don't. I feel like the media can make a much bigger difference. That's all. I'm, that's all I would want to say on that. Um, and and to be fair, like I, to give a kind of recent example, um, I spoke with um, a young man who started a basically like an online mental health support group. I can't remember if I was telling you about this, but basically what he did um, is just a kind of network of people in his local area, and he must have got like 100 members quite quickly online. Um, and I just had a wee look, because obviously I aligned it with a wee bit of what we were doing. Um, and obviously we'd done the story on it, and just to, to, uh, to show this yeah. th- th- this service is available. Um, and and, uh, and I suppose, you know, I, like, I, I don't think the story would have you know deserved much more in a paper, perhaps, but you know yourself... The format that's going to follow is this is what's happening this is why it was set up and here's a stock image of someone holding their head right yeah, which yeah. which we well you know which we love but it's <laughs> like um but you know i think as well like I, i'm always a big kind of talker on i know it's very important to talk and we all say you know you know it's time to talk and these are all the campaigns for me it comes yeah. slightly cliche sometimes and i always say well i always bring it back to well, let's not uh, talk let's do let's act yeah. you know let's get to that point of actually making a difference actually making an impact um and listen we don't know the definitive answers for that yet i think it's a continual conversation for us um but yeah that, that that's where I, I, i'm kind of i i'm kind of being on that and the reason i'm talking about that story as well is that because i i was interviewing the young man and just just thought if anything he would be a wee bit older than me or, or whatever um and just once I started finding out um, why he set up the page, um, he told me that he'd had four or five close friends um, who'd all tried to commit suicide. Oh, wow. And, and w- I think one of them, he actually lost a friend from suicide when he was in school. Um, and I said, obviously I just kind of got to the point, you don't mind me asking how old you were? And he said he's 20, 20 years 20. old. So um, I, I was speaking to my younger brother about this because he's, He's also twenty, just recently turned twenty, um, and I will see him a slightly different generation, to, you know, to, to ourselves perhaps, and um, and just when you when you start talking to people that you know say that young bit of that kind of group, um, they say a lot of things about like social media and um, lots of different presences and pressure at that age, um, and what is really striking obviously is how common um, suicidal thoughts are, and I mean let alone suicide, you know, but how you know, common that is at that age. Um, and I suppose the thing that kind of gets to me is um, trying to understand where that comes from, you know, and it, it, it's obviously a mix of many different complex matters, but um, but the fact that these figures are getting younger, um, you know, it's is, it is very, is very, very striking. So for me, all, all I wanted to do with that is do more, you know, and of yeah. course maybe I was limited or, you know, there wasn't much, I didn't have the answers, but um, there's definitely a difference we can make on some level and, and a more of a kind of pro- progression type scale. But um, that's what kind of drives me, I suppose, um, when we're talking about it's been underrepresented in the media, you know, I think it's a, it's a team effort to kind of take that a bit further. And did, did this young man mention whether or not like his friends were mainly male, female? Was it was it, was there kind of a pattern there? Did he, did sure, he yeah. I mean, he, he, he was certainly, it was certainly from both male and female, yeah. however, his close friends that he was talking about, um, I think there was like three of them, you know, and um, he he ended up becoming a mental health first aider. Um, and the thing that kind of drove him is because that he, um, you know, was male and all these kind of things that happened around him, he was very much a pillar of support for his friends, but at the same time, that really impacted his mental health. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of really got to me. Um, is you know I said well what's you know did, did did you you know seek help and I think he had some some mental health support um but yeah I think again I've spoken about this before as well but men's mental health I was gonna say yeah. men's mental health yeah. is something else that you, we're both passionate about but you in particular as well because again there's more stigma sure seems to be more stigma surrounding men's mental health men tend to have a sort of a, to have a more masculine role yeah. like to play or they feel like they feel like that. So. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's a kind of talk it's a kind of toxic kind of um role that's kind of set up mm-hmm. for men to fit into. Um again, I can only speak from my own experience as well. Um certainly when I was younger. Um and you know, and, and I no issue saying that I'd, you know there was I had friends and family members perhaps that were 
that you know that had that um, perception. And it's not so much that they would actively come out and say things; it's that you already feel like you need to explain yourself mm. to them, or, or you need to kind of live up to something which pretty much is non-existent. But how did it get there in the first place? So I think like tackling men's mental health is huge. Um, and I'm not obviously I'm not the only person you know crying out for that. But the stats are that um, the, the the biggest killer of men under fifty is suicide. Yeah. You know, like not not cancer, not um, you know not any other illness or kind of um, you know like physical condition. It, it, it's in fact the their mental health that's declined. And uh, I think that for me is really striking that people can um, to get you know to, you know to get to get to that point. And again, from my own experience, it, it's just kind of understanding their thoughts and I'm, I can only speak for myself and others I've spoke to in the same position is that they feel that it's a wee it's just that harder but harder to be open about it it's a bit harder to do anything about it um especially in a culture I think where we're kind of clo- encouraged to keep our feelings to ourselves sure. don't 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 say this don't say that don't show emotion be strong sometimes it's good to be open and vulnerable and yeah, then it kind of, absolutely. you can build yourself back up again. And absolutely. I mean, let's celebrate it. The thing that makes us human is the fact that we are vulnerable. Yeah. Um, a very smart person once told me that mental health does this crazy thing to you. Um, it, it, it makes you feel that you're the only person in the world experiencing it. Yeah. You know, and it's there's what, so many, and it's one in, what, one in four adults. Sure, exp- yeah. It, it's, it's so, it's, depression, it's, I think, it's so or... isolating, yeah. And it's so, uh, it, it, it makes you feel very vulnerable. Mm. Um, and that's how, you know, that's how powerful your mind is, you mm. know, it, at its worst. It can be just as powerful as it is at its best. Um, and that's something I've certainly learned from people I've spoke to um, over time. And it's just, um, yeah, so like, and, and again, anything we can do to kind of, you know change that perception or you know change habits change how people think I don't know uh, you know it, then we obviously want to do a bit you know to help and if it's just a case of giving people a voice then you know we're all for it aren't we yeah de- de- definitely then the main the main thing we're trying to drive home is giving people a voice and um, people that had don't know how to be heard that want to be heard that can sometimes people even find it easier to confide in a stranger than they do in their own family um as as, as well but if that helps then that's that's the main thing yeah and absolutely and i know that like from you, you know your line of work um you um you're a local editor democracy reporter so obviously that's in the political scope a lot of the time as yep. well um so obviously you spoke to me of this but but before about how kind of how, how it just kind of comes up and down doesn't it and in, in, in that environment yeah, well, the, the 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 mental health topic does like there's so much more to po- like, pol- politics and political reporting than than meets than meets the eye, and quite a lot of the time there's a lot of uh, discussions, uh, particularly surrounding men's mental health as well, um, and working groups, study groups are 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 created to um, address stigma or to and we interview people from uh, charities to see how men are feeling or anybody's feeling but regarding their mental health and they kind of to try and sort of make the political environment more in, uh, easier to work in because uh, obviously there's like a lot of debate and it can get quite yeah. nasty uh, at, at some point and as you can imagine there'll be a lot of um a, little bit, a lot of people uh, in, the, in the political environment who are maybe struggling with the, the, these comments mm-hmm. and it's about be able to do your job but without actually saying something that's going to um affect someone yeah. long long term and you never know how someone's feeling on a daily basis like the difference between like a horrible conversation or someone smiling at you could be the difference of like making or breaking someone's yeah. day it's that it's that simple so like what plus even even politicians are sort of promoting be nice <laughs> like you don't walk a mile in someone's shoes before you actually actually judge them uh, uh, like yeah no it's so important because i think these people are as well these are people you know kind of a few people that can actually you know make changes to policy perhaps yeah. and actually you know maybe change perceptions and i'm more kind of um i don't know i'm more kind of on a clinical scale in terms of a demographic. Yeah, so I think these working groups are supposed to sort of address and uh, examine the working environment, particularly in in councils or local authorities, and um, sort of see what these uh, working environments are like. Are they toxic? Are they happy? Are they going to give somebody joy coming into work? Are they going to have dread coming into work? That kind of thing. And that's not just councillors, that's MPs, that's people behind the scenes as well. 
and um, it's just about again spreading spreading the word and uh, developing these sort of practices within the workplace is a good thing we just need to expand it elsewhere it shouldn't just be practiced in government or a uh, thought yeah. local authority organizations it has to be practiced absolutely everywhere whether that be in a, an office tax office <laughs> a newspaper office yeah. uh, any anywhere at all we just need to um well, it's it's true what they say. Be kind. Yeah, it's it's a very important, very important message. Yeah, it's been a huge driver. We kind of took off around about the same time Mental Health Week was in the UK. Yes. Um, and obviously that was the kind of theme this year was to was to be, be kind. kind. And again, like, for me, I, I maybe I'm just that kind of pessimist journalist sometimes, but I kind of look at some things as, as being a wee bit cliche. But then when you kind of dig to the root in that and you cover things in a wee bit more detail, like we do at times, um. You know, you, you do uncover that message and what it does mean to be kind, and yeah. I think this message this year was being kind to the self. So yeah. hopefully, we can kind of produce that in a more in a more kind of accessible way. And it, it is very easy to be hard on yourself. Don't know about you, but I'm somebody who's <laughs> always very very hard on myself. I always be like, no, you should have done that better. You should have done that better. I'm up till three in the morning thinking about what yeah. I should have done or how I should have acted. I'm always quite hard on myself. Yeah. I've got close friends saying, you need to calm down. Like you need to you need to be kind to yourself. It's not just about being kind to other people. It's about promoting self kindness because yeah. otherwise, like. That, like being kind to yourself is one of the key steps in your journey to recovery essentially Correct, yeah yeah and i think that's the thing that we've um, always been trying to do and listen we could um you know we could you know we, we could speak at you know length about a lot of these kind of mm-hmm. topics and i know one was we're touching on there is like mindfulness yeah. days in the workplace so i think we're going to go into that a lot deeper with when the compa- once the campaign kind of continues yeah so way, we've so. Uh, lo- recently launched a cam- campaign for mindfulness days in the in the workplace i know there's a i know of a couple of organizations up and down the country um that include them which is absolutely fantastic so for those of you who aren't aware mindfulness days is um where an employer gives every employee in the in the organization in the company two mindfulness days on top of their annual holiday allowance and this means that anybody whether or not they have suffered from mental health or just are having a rough day for whatever reason can phone up their employer and say look I'm not coming in today I'm taking a mindfulness day and they don't have to give any information they don't have to say why they just say I just need a day for me and and that and that's fine and you can do whatever you want with that day you can stay in bed yeah. if that's what it takes or you can go for a walk along the beach and clear yeah. your head there's no right or wrong way to practice mindfulness yeah. but um it's about again practicing self-kindness and doing exactly. something for you that's going to make you feel good and you feel better and able to attack the day positively the next day yeah. eh, and get back and get back on the right track absolutely and no, i think it's, it's it's one of those things that anyone who spoke to me so far are very much on board with yeah. it so um, i'm sure we'll be a lot more uh, developing on that i suppose just for us to kind of close on um is just that um you know we did start this at a very kind of odd time in the world, as uh, yes, very every, odd yeah. Indeed. And believe us, we know all the all the um, cliche terms of these weird and wonderful times. So we won't bog down with that. But um, what I kind of articulated quite early on when we started was that um, lockdown and coronavirus is um, would inevitably cause an imminent decline in our mental health. Yeah. Um, I do see that. I, 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 I do see that in other people, seen it myself. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> all, all different areas in life. So, you know, in, any ideas that we can, um, you know, you know, help in any, in any way, we're obviously, we're, you know, we're very much open to them. Um, and, you know, we, 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 we are kind of discussing them in more detail every day. Um, the kind of, the more we kind of create content and things like that. Um, so it, it's just a very important point um, just on the kind of current situation, I suppose, isn't it? It's just... <laughs> Yeah, no, coronavirus has definitely um, impacted people in so many ways and you might not realise it, but financial worries are not, or, or housing worries or work worries, furlough worries is all yeah. going to be impacting on our on our mental health. And um, I know a lot of charities have been, a lot of, they're receiving a lot of calls uh, to do with coronavirus and how, how they're going to how they're going to cope and come out the other side and we still don't know and I think that's the main, con- main concern is this has been going on for so long we all thought oh, it would be done by now yeah. 
but we still we still don't know it looks like it's here to stay and we need to we need to be able to work together and help one yeah. another get get through this yeah and like I say we, you know we are adapting and maybe kind of things be kind of a bit better but the worries are still there and yeah. the anxiety is still and there whether or not COVID is going to flare up again really badly mm. are we going to go back into a lockdown how is it going to a uh, react or is it going to develop again throughout winter that that make it no. worse so yeah there's a lot of uh, yeah like pressures as yeah well there's a lot of us to kind of keep an eye on but um like i say we, we are um obviously the, obviously the podcast will be coming out uh, on a regular basis from now on um, and like i said we're we're just happy to kind of get up and running eventually, aren't we? Yeah, so absolutely, um, yeah, it's been it's been a long time coming. Yeah. So um, so it's uk for all our content. Um, this is where the podcast will be. First, the base will be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify as well. Um, so really, we're just kind of just starting the conversation today. As yeah. always, say I feel like we never finish it. Um, in <laughs> Don't terms think you of can ever finish a mental health no, discussion until mental health is finally taken yeah. seriously in the same power with physical health conditions. We will exactly, never stop yeah. talking about it. Yeah, exactly. So listen, that's what... <laughs> We're here to stay. <laughs> yeah, so basically that's, um, so that's just a wee bit about obviously what we are as an initiative, what, uh, what Thrive Through is all about. Um, really hope that people continue to engage with us um, and obviously we'll just keep... Pre- been producing and interacting and engaging uh, with our audience as well.